Let's go ahead and do habitat niche. All right, this is like a, a dung beetle, D-U-N-G. Uh, literally what it does is it rolls up balls of dung, animal waste, and it uses that for food. <laughs> as strange as that is, that's its role in that environment. That's what it does. That's how it gets its food. Um, every organism in an environment is not a, a carnivore. Everything is not an herbivore. Everything's not an omnivore. Uh, they ha it has to be that way to reduce competition between organisms. So every organism that lives in an ecosystem has to have its little specific role. It has to have its own little niche, right? And what a niche is, is how an organism gets its food, how it meets its needs for survival, and then how and where it reproduces. Um, if every organism in an environment was a herbivore, we would run out of grasses, we would run out of shrubs, we would run out of plants. Uh, there would be an extreme level of competition between those organisms, and some of them would possibly die out because they wouldn't have the resources available. That's why everything has to have its own little niche. Now, niches can change during an organism's, during an organism's life. Like, for example, the other day, we had a caterpillar, and then we had a butterfly. In the caterpillar stage, that organism's niche was it lived in a tree, and it ate leaves, right? In the butterfly stage, that organism could migrate, move from one area to another, and it basically consumed nectar from the leaves of a plant. So niches can change, right? How it gets its food, where it lives, how it meets its needs for survival. Uh, the more niches there are in an in a area, the more organisms can live in that environment or that ecosystem. Basically, niches are like the variety of jobs that are in a workplace. Uh, the more jobs are available, the more people can be there. The less jobs there are available, the less people can be there. I don't know if any of y'all have been out looking for a job right now, but it's probably pretty hard. Um, now, the habitat. Habitat is pretty self-explanatory. A habitat is just simply where an organism lives in its life or during its lifetime. This area you see over here could be considered an ecosystem or a habitat. Uh, if you want to really dwell it down, a bird would probably live in a tree. That would be its habitat. An ecosystem can have many habitats and even more niches. Um, hold on just a second. Thank you. Think about a tree and all of the niches that are in that single habitat. Uh, the birds can live in a nest. That's how, the, so the bird's niche would be, you know, living in a nest. Um, there could be insects that live in that tree that actually live on the inside of that tree maybe like a termite or any type of bug. So even though the bird and the insect live in the same habitat, that tree, they each have their own little place that they live in that tree. And that is each organism's niche. Some organisms even live along the roots and in the soil around that tree. So those are all different niches that those organisms can have. Uh, and habitats can range from ponds, lakes, forests, rainforest, ocean, oceans, and much more. Uh, the habitats are the actual workplace, and the jobs at that workplace would be considered the niche. Right, so everybody here at St. Paul's High School, we're all at the same habitat. We're all part of the same ecosystem, right? Um, but we all have different jobs. We all have different niches. Like me, obviously, I teach biology. Another teacher, Miss Bishop, teaches something else. Coach Walters teaches something else. Coach Tyler. Right, Coach Garcia, some teachers teach ACT prep. I think Garcia teaches English one. So, you know, everybody's got their own little niche. So make sure you understand the difference between habitats and niches. Now, this latest bit of information that we have to go through is on something called symbiotic relationships. Now, when you click your class, right, I want to, just as a reminder to y'all too, when y'all are clicking y'all's class and you go to modules, you know, when y'all are completing these modules, I had a couple of emails this weekend. Everybody has to complete things usually in order. Like you can't go to the attendance policy unless you have checks for all of these things. Well, how do you get a check for these things? You have to look at this page and mark it as done or view it, just simply viewing it. Same thing with introduction to biology. You had to mark something as done and each one has to be done in order. 
And now you will see too, just FYI, I have added the requirements. Let me make that note to myself. I've added the requirements for the unit two module, right? Which is ecology. You can't go to the assignment from that was due Friday, or actually today, you can't go to the assignment that's due today until you complete all of these things. And all of these things must have a check, right? So you have to mark done that you've watched this lecture, mark done that you've seen these notes, mark you have to actually submit an assignment for this to complete it before this will be available, you know, and so on and so, so forth. It's, it's fairly self-explanatory. Just always go to your modules and do everything in order. And if you do that, then you'll be fine, okay? But anyway, the next section that we had to talk about was symbiotic relationships. And matter of fact, I'll do y'all solid. And I'll go ahead and publish that so you can see it on your own time as well. Um, but I am gonna go over it with you really quickly. Symbiotic relationships are relationships that exist between organisms that are two different species. Obviously, here you see a relationship between a bee and a flower. Now, what this bee is doing is it's getting nectar from this leaf. That's how it gets its food. That's how it gets its sugar. That's how it gets its energy. In turn, all these little hairs that's on this bee, they're picking up pollen from this plant. And when this bee goes to different flowers in search of more nectar, it takes that pollen from one plant to another plant and it helps these plants with, excuse me, cross-pollination, all right? So that's a relationship between two different species. The first relationship we're gonna talk about, and here's your vocabulary for this section. The first relationship we're gonna talk about, or let's give you the definition here. Symbiotic relationships are relationships between two organisms that are different species, and these relationships are usually related to the survival of the organisms. Like for example, that bee needed nectar to survive. That plant needed that bee's help in able or in order to be able to pollinate and make sure that that species survived. There are four types of symbiotic relationships. They are predation, mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. All right, make sure you're able to say those, predation, mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. All right, the first one is mutualism. Mutualism is, there's basically a mutual benefit, right? When you have a mutual benefit or a mutual agreement with people, usually both benefit. Uh, so mutualism is where both species will actually benefit. Now, a plant species benefits from a butterfly because that that plant gets help in pollination. So that plant species basically benefits. In turn, the butterfly benefits by receiving food or nectar. So this would be an example of mutualism. Same thing with um, the bee and the flowers. I don't know if y'all have ever seen this before, but there's actually a crocodile or alligator that'll allow a bird to sit in its mouth and pick food out from its teeth. Um, so that's an example of mutualism as well, because that bird is getting food and this crocodile is actually getting its teeth cleaned. So that's another example of mutualism. So to identify what type of relationship it is, you actually have to look at what's going on, determine if both are benefiting, and if they are, then that symbiotic relationship would be mutualism. Now your next type is commensalism. The most famous example of this are barnacles that are actually growing on whales. You can see these barnacles that actually will grow on a whale. In this relationship, you have one species benefiting and the other is neither benefiting nor being harmed. All right, so you have one benefiting, but over here is nothing, it's neither nor, all right? So how would you describe that by using the barnacles on the whale? Well, the barnacles that grow on these whales, they get to travel for free, which would be nice. And they usually get food. So anywhere this whale is going in search of food is probably gonna have some debris left over or you know, after it eats, it may have some crumbs that fall out or it might just be in the general area of food. 
And then by chance, these barnacles benefit from that because they're getting carried to food. They're getting delivered to food, right? On the other side of that equation, the whale, these barnacles do not harm that whale. They also do not benefit that whale, right? So since the whale is neither benefited nor harmed and the barnacles are benefiting, this would be an example of commensalism, right? An easy way I try to remember this stuff is that mutualism is when both species benefit. Commensalism is when one benefits and the other is neither benefited nor harmed. And then your next one, parasitism, will be where one benefits and the other is harmed. This is the little sequence I kind of try to use to remember these. Makes it easier for me. All right, now parasitism. You've probably heard that word before, parasite. It is a relationship where one species will benefit at the expense or at the harm of the other. This is like your parasite and host relationship. Here you see a tick, right? That tick would be considered a parasite. A tapeworm would be considered a parasite. A bot fly would be considered to be a parasite. If you get bored, go online on YouTube and look up bot fly removal, B-O-T-F-L-Y. It's actually a parasite that will grow in your skull or in your head, and scientists will actually have to remove it with a set of tweezers, and it leaves a hole in your head about the size of an eraser. It's nasty stuff. All right, but anyway, in this example, the tick would be the parasite and the human would be the host. Same thing with a bot fly. Um, a bot fly would be the parasite and the human would be the host. The host is usually the one that is being harmed and the parasite is usually the one that is benefiting. Fleas on a cat, ticks on a dog, tapeworms that grow in your stomach. Dogs can get heartworms. Heartworms are an example of a parasite. The dog would actually be the host. Now this is important. This part right here is very important. Parasites will not kill their host. The reason they will not kill their host is because they need that host to continue living for the parasite survival, right? If a tick is on a dog and the dog dies, right? What does the tick do? Now the tick has no, it has no resource, it has no host. So most likely the parasite, the tick would die too if it didn't find a host. So parasites will harm an organism, but they will not kill it. That fact is what separates parasitism from predation. Predation is much different than parasitism. Predation, yeah, one benefits and one is harmed, but the one that is harmed is actually killed, right? Obviously this organism right here is dead dead. So in this case, the predator would be the lion, and then whatever this is, probably a wildebeest, um, has been killed, right? This is simply a predator-prey relationship. One benefits at the obvious expense of the other, and this type of relationship is what helps keep populations in balance. Predator-prey relationships prevent the overpopulation or underpopulation of a species. Everything kind of has to have a predator. Um, if it doesn't, it'll get overpopulated. That's why they talk about invasive species becoming overpopulated. Or that's why you have deer hunting season, because deers don't have any natural predator in an environment other than humans. So to prevent their population from being overpopulated, you have to have hunting seasons. If you've ever watched Discovery Channel and seen swamp people, swamp people will actually have, uh, they hunt alligators, right? They have to have an alligator hunting season, not just because somebody wants an alligator pair of slippers at church on Sunday or an alligator purse, okay? They have to have hunting seasons to keep the alligator population from becoming overpopulated because there is no natural organism in our environment that is a predator to an alligator. I know some of y'all have probably seen some wild things on Facebook about a python eating an alligator or a cheetah eating an alligator, but these are rare occurrences. They are not natural. They are not the norm in biology, or nor are they the norm in ecosystems. All right, so things you add from today, you had, let me make sure I, I get this off here. 
things you had from today, you had to know the difference between what is an organism's niche and then what is an organism's habitat. And then we looked at all of these symbiotic relationships. We looked at what is symbiosis. Symbiosis is the same thing as symbiotic relationship, means the same thing. It is just a relationship that exists between two organisms that are a different species. And then we categorize them into four different types. The four different types are mutualism. That's where both benefit. Commensalism is where one benefits and the other one is neither benefited nor harmed. Parasitism is just like predation, but there's a small difference. Parasitism is where one benefits and the other one is harmed. Okay, that's when you have a parasite in a host, like a flea on a cat or a tick on a dog or a tapeworm in a human. Could be any of those things, as long as you're dealing with a parasite. But that parasite will not kill the host because that parasite needs its host for survival. Predation is a little bit different, but it's kind of the same. Predation, one benefits and the other one is harmed, but it's harmed to the extent which it is killed, right, for some type of food. Um, and know the difference between a parasite and a host. Parasite is the organism that is, that is benefiting in parasitism, and a host is whatever that organism is living on. All right, so a couple big things here. Now, I do want to take a second to remind you guys that when y'all are going through these course modules, right, 